What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video, and this video is quite an odd one, especially for this channel. This particular video is catered to new players. Bah! And the reason I decided to make this video, especially for new players, because I have a lot of them. There's like a, been a massive influx of so many new players ever since 2024. I wonder why. But that's a good thing, because all these new players, of course, want to experience the game and they need help. And they usually ask, what's a good frame? What's a good this? What's a good that? So this particular video is going to address those questions. Well, mainly, what's a good weapon for this mastery rank? And that's why I decided to make this one. This video will cover mastery ranks one all the way up to 12, because let's be honest, once you hit MR12 or even past that, you're at that point where you can figure out what you want to prioritize on because past MR12, you have access to Kuva weapons and other amazing prime weapons and you're slowly progressing your way through the star chart and entering into steel path. That's if you're not getting carried all the way. Because at that point, you should at least have two or three favorite Warframes that you want to fully invest in and want to use them in your Steel Path journey. And you already have a nice set of weapons that are built and have at least one or two Forma and of course a potato. You know, Orkin Catalyst, Orkin Reactors, you, you, you get it. The biggest hurdle is not going to be the items that you have but your mods. Mods are going to be a massive boon to everything that you're going to be building from your Warframes and weapons. So at that point, you should really focus on maxing out your mods, having the correct mods for specific weapons and specific content. So without further ado, let's get started on the first set of weapons. So once you're done with your awakening quest, this is literally the first quest that you're going to be getting where you pick your first Warframe and you're going to get your weapons. These are the first starting weapons and whatever weapons that you pick there are going to be your first set of weapons until you hit mastery rank two. And does it matter which one you pick? No, just go whatever feels right to you. You want to pick a bow? You want to pick a assault rifle? It's up to you. Just go for it. It doesn't matter until until you hit mastery rank two and that's where you're gonna start to decide oh maybe i like to use these types of weapons instead but before i show you the weapons you're also going to be asking well how are we going to build them well you're going to have this one set build for a majority of your star chart adventure because in star chart you just want to deal as much damage as you can so you want to prioritize building for raw dps rather than damage over time or any sort of weird scaling mechanic because it's not going to be that important, especially early on in the game. However, with the builds I'll show you, use it as a template to help you understand why certain mods are used. You're going to notice a similar build for both primary and secondary. And depending on what type of primary you use, you just change one or two mods. That's about it. Usually you're going to be getting a lot of assault rifles in the beginning and you're not going to have a bunch of polarity or slots like I do. Everything you're going to be seeing in the modding screen here is going to be at its 100% value, meaning their base stats. By applying mods onto them, you're multiplying their base stats. And a basic build for a majority of the star chart, you want to multiply your base damage. So you have to have a serration on here. This gives you more damage with your shots. Another important thing that you want to have is multi-shot. Multi-shot will increase the amount of pellets that you shoot out with every trigger pull. So right now, with my multi-shot increase by 90% means that I will have a 90% chance to shoot an additional bullet with my shots. Very useful. And a majority of the weapons are going to have some crit stats. Let's build on that. We want to put in our crit chance mod, which increases the probability of me landing a critical hit and to multiply the damage that I deal when I crit, I will use a critical damage mod as this increases the multiplier only when I crit. So 75% of the time I will deal 6.6 .6 times my damage. Now that we already multiplied our base damage and we have a 90% chance to double that base damage with multi shot and increasing our damage when we crit, let's add another multiplier to this build. And that comes in the shape of elemental damage. Usually a bunch of enemies are going to be weak to a certain element, but a majority of the enemies that you will face will have armor. And that type of armor is usually alloy or ferrite. Ferrite is weak to corrosive damage and corrosive damage, I would say is way more potent for a majority of the things that you're going to be doing. So that's what we're going to be modding for. Notice when I put this mod here, I got a new multiplier, toxin damage. Without this, it's just your 
IPS, Impact Puncture Slash. When I punt an elemental damage mod, now we get a new type of damage, Toxin. And notice that our total damage has increased from 110 to now 210 because it's a separate multiplier. And now we increase that damage by adding another elemental damage multiplier. Boom, Electricity and Toxin forms Corrosive. Notice how our damage increased drastically from 110 to 310. Adding different multipliers greatly increases your damage. So I took those off right now. As you just saw, I got 310 damage. But when we look at this mod, it's 165% more damage. That's big, right? So that means if I put Serration and Heavy Caliber together, I'll get even more damage? That doesn't look that impressive compared to the Elemental Damage mods. These two mods are the same multiplier, so they're going to be additive to each other. When you're building a weapon, you want to have different multipliers so that you can increase your total outgoing damage. So that's why you don't want to mix too much of the same thing. You want to spread your multipliers on a weapon like you're spreading butter on toast. You got to get that even coating so then that each bite has a bit of butter. You get what I'm saying? Infected Clip, Stormbringer, now you have Corrosive. That's even more damage. This is a basic build for a majority of the weapon especially starting out in the star chart. And notice now we have two flex slots. These two flex slots can be whatever you want. That's if you end up getting these mods. But I would highly recommend putting in some fire rate or reload speed, depending on what weapons you use. In terms of fire rate, you're going to get speed trigger. This is the first fire rate mod that you get. Here, I have 24 fire rate. My shots are not coming out even faster. And finally, you can have some reload speed. See, instead of 3 seconds, now it's 2.3 seconds. It's a bit faster because some weapons have gone awful reload speeds and a low magazine, and it can be very painful to look at. I want you to keep in mind this type of modding. Same thing goes for a secondary. You have your base damage, which is like serration, multi shots, which is a lot higher than the primary weapon. You have your crit chance, you have your crit damage, and electricity and toxin. Same type of build. Then the rest can be whatever you want. Secondary weapons have the option of giving you fire rate and multi-shot at the same time with a mod like Lethal Torrent. And because this weapon over here is a beam weapon, you have an option to increase its beam length with mods like Ruinous Extension. And when it comes to melee, similar things, but you have other unique mods. Let's take a look. You have stance mods that dictate the way you're going to swing that melee. And stances have different types of combo that you can perform. And the combos that you have here also have damage multipliers. So that's why some stances are better than others and feel more comfortable to use. So this is a sword right here. And the best stance for a sword is, of course, Crimson Dervish. You have your base damage with pressure points, crit chance with true steel, crit damage, organ shatter, attack speed with fury, range with reach. Yes this increases your swing range. And of course, we have our corrosive damage. Now with that modding section out of the way and understanding how these things work, let's take a look at the weapons that you're going to be needing. Now that you've picked your character, you've been doing a couple of quests and missions, you're finally able to rank up to mastery rank two. And you feel like, I don't like the weapons that I picked. I want something a bit better. That's great. Because at Mastery Rank 2, I highly recommend for you to get either of these two primary weapons. You have the Boltor, which is very nice for a lot of new players. You don't necessarily have to fully invest into this weapon. Just give it some basic, basic modding because you're going to be upgrading just a bit later on. Why I say it's going to be better later on? Because you're going to have upgrades of this weapon. Because some weapons have different variants. Your basic version is the Boltor. You have a Syndicate variant and a Prime variant. So don't worry about it too much. This is a nice starter weapon at Mastery Rank 2. However, if you're not feeling assault rifles that can pin enemies to the wall, you have other options, especially if you're interested in sniping down your enemies. The Vectus, the regular Vectus. This was my first weapon at MR2, and I used it to the living hell. With a properly built Vectus, it can even kill level 200 Steel Path enemies. And when it comes to secondaries, I recommend for you to get the Fury. Furious. Furious is actually really big because later on down the line, you're going to get access to it's an incarnate adapter. Incarnate adapters are late game things that you will be getting when you start farming in the steel path. It makes the weapon even stronger. 
So getting that weapon earlier on is a nice boost to your account. And when you hit MR3, you have the option of upgrading your melee at this point. There are only two useful options I would recommend. You have the Ak Brunt, which gets an incarnate adapter later on. And of course, the Heat Sword, which you get after completing one of your quests. A very early quest. It doesn't have the greatest stats, but it's a sword. So now you have the option of running a sword and shield or a sword up to you. You also have access to your Nightwave rewards. As a new player, I would highly recommend focusing on getting your Orkin Catalyst, Orkin Reactors, and even Nitain Extract from the Nightwave shop. But you can also grab yourself a Ceramic Dagger if it does show up, and that is if you have bonus credits to spend. Another great thing about the Nightwave for new players is that it gives you a Relic Pack, it gives you Weapon Slots, which goes for 12 Plant by the way, and other unique things. So, so make sure to do your dailies and weeklies in Nightwave, because these benefit new players a lot more than your active or veteran players. Okay, and then at MR4, you get access to the Heck. This is when you can upgrade your primary to a very strong one. That's if you really enjoy the Vectus and you don't really care about the heck, but it gives access to a new weapon type, a shotgun. The heck is pretty good, especially the first one, as they are two other variants. But the first one gets access to Scattered Justice. It's a 200% multi-shot increase. You can get this as you're in a you can get this from the Steel Meridian Syndicate, but I highly recommend to just buy it from other players. It's affordable and not that expensive. But that's if you want to invest in the shotgun. At the same time, you can upgrade your secondary. The only one I would recommend at MR4 is the regular Nucor. It's an okay weapon. You can only get access to this weapon if you're in a clan dojo. When you are in your clan dojo, you have four different places that you definitely want to visit. Your energy lab, chem lab, bio lab, and tenno lab. Of course, you're going to be dealing with orkin lab, but don't worry about this just yet. Tenno lab offers you tenno weapons, and you can get access to warframe blueprints. But some of these weapons do have some steep requirements early on. And yes, all these weapons have mastery requirements, so be sure to look at the mastery requirement next to the weapons research. So you're going to be getting access to the new core, at the chem lab at MR4. It's going to be a very nice weapon, just like the Ak Brunt at MR3, which I forgot to mention. Also at MR4, you have access to the Zorus, but I don't really recommend this weapon for a lot of new players because it uses three specific mods that can be a bit harder for new players to get and to max out. But if you have the Platinum and you want to spend that Platinum to get those mods working, then invest in it. Also, to make the weapon even better, you need an Arcane, which you do get later on down the line. But with that, Arcane itself makes this weapon a very useful AoE clearing machine. So you have different builds for this weapon. You have the crit version and the non-crit version. Like I said, this is a bit more advanced for a lot of new players, but that's what it takes to make this weapon feel even better than it already is, even though it's an MR4 weapon. So just keep that in mind. And around MR5, I'm pretty sure you've progressed through the story a decent amount. And you're doing the second dream. Because once you finish with the second dream, you get rewarded with an amazing weapon called the Broken War. This is a very, very strong melee weapon. Definitely kill the highest enemy levels in the game with this weapon. And of course, I did show you the basic build for it. The great thing about getting this weapon for free is that it comes with a pre-installed Orkin Catalyst. So free potato, free weapon slot. It already has very good stats, so you can start building this weapon and making it an amazing powerhouse in your arsenal. And as you're playing the game, this is where you're going to be leveling things up and getting your mastery rank up. But if you do find something that you enjoy along the way, then try it out, see if you like it, because that's, that's the main thing here. You want to enjoy and test things out, and you might end up finding something that you like that's not even recommended in this video. But during this journey, you're also going to encounter the Stalker, because he's, he's st he literally stalks you. He has issues. And when you encounter him, kill him, he has a very high chance of dropping the Dread. Dread is a very powerful bow that you get earlier on. It has insane, insane stats, especially especially for a lot of new players. And this is where a lot of players get their minds blown because it has a base of 50% crit chance, a two times critical multiplier, and it's heavy in the slash department. With that much crit chance, you put on a point strike, you're critting 100% of the time and 25% chance to deal an orange crit. So now I just gave you a primary and a melee. How about a secondary? And a very strong one that you can get at MR5 is the Atomos. This is also a dojo weapon. Similar build, 
and it's a beam weapon that shoots fire. So with corrosive and heat on enemies, you're lowering their armor and you're shredding them. And the best part is you don't need to really aim with this weapon. And of course it has an incarnate adapter. Is it that great with the incarnate adapter? Not really, but it gives you free bonus stats. So why not? So now you're chilling with the Heck, the Dread, Vectus, the Atomos, and the Broken War. Very strong combination very early on in the game. So you're going to keep these weapons until you hit Mastery Rank 8. And that's when you're going to upgrade your primary. And at Mastery Rank 8, you're going to have access to some really strong weapons. But this also depends where you are in your quests and what you have access to. Because you can get access to the Cedo. It's a very strong shotgun and a better upgrade from the heck because this weapon can shoot out a glaive that can bounce out, apply multiple status effects on enemies, and a star charge, you can kill those enemies outright. But in late game, this status application boosts this weapon's damage because every unique status effect on the target will greatly increase the damage output of this weapon and if you really like bows you get access to paris prime this prime weapon is never vaulted and just like dread it has an incarnate upgrade but if you're tired of beam weapons mr8 gives you access to pandero this is one of if not old time favorite secondary weapons this secondary weapon carried me so hard early on and i definitely invested so much into this weapon as builds change over time if you're played overwatch it's like playing mccree hit scan and then it's alternate fire fans the hammer but that's up to you if you want to upgrade your primary at mastery rank 8 because at mastery rank 9 you get access to the ignis wraith this is insanely good to have for new players and with the recent changes this is available to every clan dojo because it's going to be your first good primary beam weapon there is the regular ignis but you don't need that you go for the Ignis Wraith. And if the names look different, it's because you can rename your weapons. And just like the Atomos, it's innate heat. And when you mod it for corrosive, you got corrosive and heat. But this is a beam weapon that also has a bit of punch through, meaning it goes through some objects. And it has a little three meter explosion at the end of the beam. And beam weapons are a bit unique because they require ramp up damage. So if you have a basic build just like this, please do invest in adding fire rate onto this weapon. Fire rate is going to be massive. But of course, if you have access to corrupted mods, this is where things will change because vile acceleration is going to be a better fire rate increase. Having that increase in fire rate and beam ramp up makes this weapon so much stronger and it's going to carry you really far early on into the game. And it has really good ammo economy with 200 bullets in the magazine that's why you see a lot of people with ignis wraith as their most used weapon because it's just that good earlier on and also there's another reason why people love to use ignis because it requires no aim you're gonna keep those weapons for quite a while until you hit mastery rank 11 and that's when you can decide whether you want to upgrade or not this is not really tied to mastery or anything like that but when you finally get access to the new war quest which requires a bit of things that you need to grind for like a railjack and a necromech so once you finally get access to this quest and once you complete it you get two free weapons and these two free weapons are the primary weapon the Naturuk, which is a very strong bow so if you don't like the dread and you want a different type of playstyle, a unique playstyle with bows where you need that perfect shot then Naturuk is pretty good and just like the broken war this is a free weapon slot and it already has a potato alongside the Naturuk, you also get the rumble jack personally not a fan of this weapon nor do i find it quite useful but it's a free weapon nonetheless and at mr11 the only thing I would suggest getting is the Jad Kuzar. This is an amazing melee weapon. It is a fire melee weapon. But I know a lot of people get so obsessed and hooked with the Broken War because it's just so good, so easy to use, and deadly. But at mastery rank 12 is where things greatly change. Remember, as I said earlier, this is when you're going to be planning things out a bit more, but you're also going to get access to a lot of prime weapons. This is when prime weapons start flooding in like crazy. But you also have to realize one thing. Even though you can use or craft these prime weapons, you don't have access to all of them. Because if you're new to Warframe, prime items get vaulted meaning they get sunset for a while. You can still farm them if you own the relics, and you can still get them from other players who farmed them via the trading system. But of course, these sunset items do come back down the line. If they're unvaulted and they're ready to farm, I highly recommend getting the ones that I'm about to tell you. But first, 
one of the prime weapons available at MR12 that's never going to be vaulted is the Orthos Prime. This is an amazing melee weapon. This can carry you everywhere to steel path and beyond. It's that good of a weapon. And I definitely recommend for you to get it. If you're out farming other types of weapons that do happen to get vaulted or unvaulted. And if you see them, go for them right away. One of them being the Nakano Prime. This thing has amazing stats, shreds enemies, and it's perfect for any activity. And at MR12, you also have Gunsen Prime. The regular Gunsen, eh, nah. Gunsen Prime is insanely good. Amazing stats, similar to the Nakano Prime. And it has an amazing combo called Votive Onslaught, which allows you to move forward as you slash everything in sight. You see what I did there? In, in, in slight? Bad joke. It's fine. Moving on. You can also get the Prisma Oma from the Void Trader or trading it with other players. And of course, with primary weapons, you have access to the Fulmin Prime. You can get the regular Fulmin at MR8 if you wanted to, but you have access to a better upgrade, a Fulmin Prime, which is a decent auto rifle. But then you also have the Burstin Prime. Another thing is the Burstin Prime has an Incarnate Adapter, which is one of the strongest Incarnate weapons in the game so get yourself the burst in prime or the fulman prime whichever one you want and there you go guys these are the weapons that i highly recommend from mr1 all the way up to 12 because past that there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to be grinding for you're gonna to have to deal with your focus school your amps arcanes warframes clearing your quests getting access to steel path all of those things are going to be a bit overwhelming so get these weapons in hand and they're going to help you out. At the same time, you're going to be leveling up your mods. But if you don't have time to farm credits or endo, you can always farm platinum or, you know, swipe for platinum and buy max level mods and, of course, improve your builds. Another major thing is that you're going to be deleting weapons back and forth because you're going to be juggling your weapon slots and warframe slots. So you want to prioritize a lot of things. At MR8, you're going to get access to the helmet system. So instead of deleting warframes, you can just sacrifice old warframes Warframes that you won't be needing and getting access to one of their abilities, which is really nice for late game builds. But yeah, for returning players or people who want to improve their arsenal a bit more, I do have a video with the top weapons that you want to have in 2024. So do go check that video out. And if you want to know what good Warframes you want to have in your arsenal, do go check out my top 10 Warframes that you need to have in 2024. Hope this video helped out a lot of new players because these questions get asked so many times. So I thought, you know what? We need a video for this. And for those who want to know how many weapons are there for specific mastery ranks, I'm going to give you a Google Doc that will list out all the weapons in order of mastery rank. So if you're if you're one of those guys like, I don't agree with this, I don't get that, get this. You can just go through that list, see what you like, see what fancies you and have fun because that's the most important thing about playing a video game you want to have fun but then again people want to know what the good stuff is so they don't waste their time on the bad stuff anyway folks that has been it for me i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do feel free to leave a like share and subscribe for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always a peace bye bye now